Hey guys, um, as promised, today I'm going to do a, do a overview of all the parts that I have on the car. Um, we'll be focusing specifically on performance parts on the car. And um, yeah, I thought up of a ranking system in order to justify or to classify which parts I feel is, I guess, more worth. Basically, um, for rank A, we're going to have parts which are, um, I guess, worth the money, mm, make the biggest difference, and are essential to the car. Basically, if you're going to go out drifting and you have a full stock car and you need a list of parts, essential parts, to get yourself rolling, then this would be rank A stuff, you know, things that you really need. And then rank B would be mm, stuff which make a big improvement for the car, but aren't exactly necessary. I guess things that, you know, are nice, definitely make a huge improvement, but you know, you don't really need it if you're, you know, on a budget or out there on like, you know, on the track. And then you have rank C, which is things which, you know, totally aren't worth it or, well, I got it because I thought it was nice, but then it, you really don't need it. And um, yeah, we'll start from here. And um, yeah, I guess I'll do this in a very raw kind of walk around style. So let's start with the engine bay. So in here we have, well, quite a lot of things. First of all, if you want to get into drifting, I'd say the recent install, the Mishimoto radiator, this has been great. Um, mount things that come with the fan, they kind of didn't work too well and fell off mid-drift. But uh, the fan is in good condition and we, were ma uh, we managed to zip tie it back on. Um, yeah, this is strange because I thought, you know, I'd buy a proper mounting system. But in the end, zip ties are king. But yeah, make sure, make sure your fans are um, wired in the correct uh, orientation that they're in the pull position and you can switch it for a push but yeah make sure it's blowing in the right direction or else you're gonna get some overheating issues well with the radiator I'd say it's a rank A it definitely over the stock radiator makes a big difference in cooling the car especially if you're drifting if you're doing runs you know pushing the car on a hot day and then immediately after you know like doing a like a run you know hitting red line and stuff and then coming to a line and stopping you know where there isn't any free flow you're gonna need a good fan and a good radiator to keep your car cool so i'd say worth your money definitely get a radiator a good radiator um yeah the big elephant in the room uh the 20 valve now it there is a noticeable difference over the stock 16 valve for ag but you really don't need that power for a car this light if you're going drifting you're good with a 16 valve i can say this now and um I really do like the 20 valve. I'm really happy with it. But for its, you know, for the money and stuff, I'd say it's a rank B. So, yeah, it's something which you do it if you want it, not like you need it. There you go. That's like that's a good answer. For the strut bar, I'd say it's a rank B because, you know, it's just it's a bit expensive, but I wanted this so it has the show factor, you know, it's like a unique part. It's, it's it's JDM, yo. You can go with a cheaper one, a T3 one, it will do the exact same job for performance. And if you had a T3 one, or uh, I'm not sure, maybe Cusco one's cheaper, but yeah, that would be a rank A because I do notice a big difference in, um, I guess, the structure of the car. It's, it's definitely more sound. Um, we have down here the uh, tension rod, um, like bar, which connects from the subframe that connects the tension rod to the to the frame rail um, and it just bolts right here honestly I can't imagine it doing much more than what this guy is doing so it is probably going to be a rank C you really don't need it but I got it because it's cool and I think it does make a difference but um, yeah and since we're down here front sway bars I'd say 
these guys are great. They really do, do make a difference and it is noticeable, but I would say it's a rank B simply because you can get coilovers. Now I'd say first mod, if anything out there, a complete rank A mod would be coilovers, a good set of coilovers, simply because, well, you can adjust the ride height, you can adjust the, um, the shock rates to make it stiffer or softer. And um, yeah, T3, Megan, Cusco, I don't think Cusco makes any, uh, Gretti, whatever's out there, Fortune Auto, it's, it's all a matter of opinion and preference. Um, they all do a good job. Um, I guess, you know, these guys have done me pretty well. So yeah, sure, if you want to, get to T3 ones. But I'd say if you want a specific one, ask a owner who has one on his car and ask him, you know, like if, if he thinks they're great or if they, you know, if he has any complaints. That's one way to tell if a, a, a coilover system is good or not. Another rank A um, part I do suggest is the tension rod, the adjustable tension rod. Why is this important? Um, well, simply because you can adjust it. The tension rod adjusts the caster in the car, which is the, the coilover is kind of like this. And well, I guess with maximum caster, it would be going like this. So what does that do? When you turn the wheel, um, the car will lean in the opposite direction. And um, I guess with that characteristic, uh, with maximum caster, like have this guy shorten as much as possible. Uh, when you're drifting, the wheel will, um, if you're going sideways, the wheel will want to go in the direction the car is moving. So it has great like response, you know, you can, as you're flicking over, you can let go of the wheel and the wheel will snap in the direction you're going, which is what you want for learning how to drift or just great drifting in general. Uh, only downside is it will make turning the wheel um, when you're not moving and you don't have power steering really difficult. But um, yeah, definitely rank A. Get that if you're going out drifting. Uh, since we're here, the brakes, these guys. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are eager to hear about them, but uh, for now, I can say, I can confirm that there is definitely better pedal feel. Um, yeah, it just feels so much nicer. I can heel toe better for some strange reason, but um, yeah, it's gonna be a rank B for now, um, simply because I'm talking in terms of uh, eight six for drifting, maybe for track, which I am actually going on a track day next week. So I will have to come back and give you a better review of these brakes after that track day. But I'd say for now, it's a rank B. I really like them. Um, you really don't need them, but they're really nice and I wanted them. So yeah, cool. manual steering rack. Um, I'd say do it. It's probably a... Ah, oh, this one's tough. I'd say... Hmm. It's probably going to be a rank B. You don't really need it. It's not like really important. You can definitely drift with a uh, power steering setup, but uh, I guess because it's cost-wise, you have to find the rack, you have to find, you have to get the intermediate shaft, and um, yeah, because of that, it's probably going to be a B. So yeah, really nice. It helps a lot. Um, some people say it's essential for drifting. Uh, it definitely does give you more angle, which is something to keep in mind. But um, it's really tough. I'd say it's a A B A B. Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put that there. Back here we have the. I have T three coilovers for the rear. Now a lot of people say they don't like this system because it's all on the shock and the spring perch is not being used. And normally the weight of the car would be here, like supported on the spring spring perches. This car has been drifting for over five years before I've owned it. And before this, uh, the previous owner had a QA1 coilover system. Those are meant for like Camaros and stuff. But yeah, they, they bolted up to this section. They were blown, which is why I replaced it to 
the T3 ones because I felt, why not? It's the quickest replacement. But yeah, um, they work. Uh, people say it's bad, it's not using the spring perch, but really they do the job. I'm happy with them. It's a rank A part because, you know, coilovers. You want to have adjustability in your suspension and yeah, good for that. Uh, brakes in the rear. Um, I haven't used the handbrake yet, so I can't really say if these pads are great or not. But the, hey, hey, it's just good pedal feel so far. So brakes, I'll come back to that later. Um, rear sway bars. Uh, you know how I was talking about how like um, I wanted more stability in the back. I didn't want the shocks set too stiff because of a bumpy corner. Um, I actually have to get back to that because in that exact corner there was a wet patch. <laughs> So I had to let off the throttle anyway, so I can't really, I can't really say anything. But that corner, I really want to go through it full throttle, and I kind of have to. But yeah, I can't really, I can't really comment on that yet. Um, on the diff, we have a Tomei uh, LSD, two-way LSD. It was about eight hundred dollars. It's really expensive. Um, hmm, I would say. It's probably gonna be the same as the steering rack. It would make a big difference, especially if you street your car very often. If, you're, if your car is a complete like track car, drift car, then go ahead and weld it or get a spool or you know whatever. It's, it's cheaper, it will do the same job, but the reason why I like a LSD is because you still have the functionality of a regular diff, you know, parking, driving really slow, it will still slip, but then when you need it to lock, it will lock, so. That does the job really nicely so it's it's an a b part um yeah seats get some nice seats seats are good Ooh, if you can get a nice steering wheel i definitely say get a nice steering wheel because you know you that's where you're connecting with the car the most and certainly before anything make sure you get a good quality hub now nrg is an x you know they aren't exactly the best but hey this is a really thick piece of uh aluminium and that's not going to be snapping on you unlike the ebay ones do not get the ebay ones i highly suggest not to get that um yeah don't die um but yeah get a good pair of seats it will hold you in you know when you're drifting You'd be surprised there's lots of cornering g-forces because you are breaking the limits of the grip your tire has to get sideways so there's a lot of g-force involved in that and you don't want to be sloshing around inside your seat because that will make you really tired and um yeah you just want to be held in place as you're busy with all the controls in the car and concentrating as well um get a fire extinguisher there's normally essential or required in um I guess the regulations for tech so yeah make sure you do that other parts um um argument fake versus real wheels um you know what for an a86 you have such a small size you have a thicker um sidewall depth um you really aren't re gonna see a situation where you're gonna be denting these fuckers cause like, really, like fake wheels, real wheels, if you've messed them up that badly, uh, yeah, it's, it's a stupid argument. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna mess up your wheels. But basically, the only real difference I see between the two is that this guy, my real SSR door doors are a lot lighter than that and they're better balanced. I, there are less wheel weights, like stick-on wheel weights on this guy than on my um, XXR wheels. So I love having these guys in the front, you know, just less, you know, st steering wheel wobble thing. Um, for the rear, it doesn't really matter. Throw whatever you want in there, and, you know, you're drifting, you know. You don't really have to care about the wheels. Plus, if you hit a curb with, like, shitty wheels in the back, well, these aren't, but, like, you know, you, you, you wouldn't give, a, like, two cents about it. Um, yeah. Get a good set of tires for the front. I have Yokohama Niova's 8008s. They grip really well. I'm going to be using these guys on a track day, so yeah, I can't wait to feel the full potential of that. But um, yeah, you want a good set of tires in the front because, you know, when you're learning, you might not know how to like 
control the weight shift of the car so you'd be relying a lot on just turning in as like really aggressively and that could lead to serious understeer if you don't have good grip in the front <laughs> What else? What else? 20 valve, I love this motor, but still rank B. Um, so to summarize, I made a list of the rank A, rank B, rank C parts. So essentials, things that you need to do first um, that are like, make the biggest difference um, that you really need out there on the track. But yeah, coilovers, radiator, all this stuff. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. I originally said that the LSD was like a rank B, but I'd say you really do need a good diff out there. So I'm gonna. I'm, I moved it to rank A. Um, another thing. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention was gauges. You want. You know. When you're out there on the track, you want to know what your engine is doing. So you need to make sure you have an oil pressure gauge, a uh, coolant temperature gauge, and just voltage, just to check how much, you know, volts you're using up. I put a squiggly line over big brakes because it's just brakes in general. Um, for like, let's say your first drift day, you don't really need to upgrade your brakes. Your standard brakes will do fine. But after, let's say, a couple runs, or if you drive your car a lot, I'd say something good to get, something cheap, and definitely rank A is, um, stainless steel lines, braided lines, because it improves um, pedal feel and it, um, I guess, stops any chances of your brake lines popping, which that actually happened to a friend of mine. So I'd say check out your brakes. Do that sometime after a couple, couple events. But yeah, but yeah, here are all the rank B stuff. And um, fan controller, because I know a lot of drifters out there, they just have it to a switch so you can like control it manually, but you know, you can forget now and then, but yeah, it's, it's nice to have. You don't really need it. Tension rod bar, as I said, mm, it's just there for flair. It's there for show. Yeah, get it if you need it, if you want it. Another thing I forgot to mention was short shifter. That really does help with like, you know, the accuracy or the position of like finding where your gears are and it's just it's it's nice to have um but yeah yeah i, th I think i've covered most of the significant parts on the car performance parts um if there's something that i left out i guess call me out in the comment section i always reply to comments so yeah Hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was informative and build your cars, guys. And yeah, have a fun time.